Alright guys, we're going to wrap up chapter 16 today with just a couple of sections and then a quick overview of some diseases and disorders related with the digestive system. So, 16.9 talks about age-related changes uh, that affect the digestion and absorption of food go entering the body. And so, normal digestion and absorption will continue to take place, but there'll just be some changes and basically some weakening and slowing down. Uh, for example, the division rate of the epithelial stem cells declines. Therefore, um, elderly people are more susceptible to damage and to damage to the tissues of the lining of the stomach and other organs as well as ulcers. And then the smooth muscle tone is going to decrease. And what this means is, is general gastrointestinal motility will decrease, so the movement of things through the system as well as the peristaltic contractions are going to weaken. So basically slowing down the digestive process in general. And then the effects of cumulative damage over time are going to become apparent. So like we're going to have gradual loss of teeth, uh, gingivitis possibly, and then liver, liver damage depending on the amount of toxins that have been induced to the body such as alcohol. Now another big one that's very common for people um, when they get older and they also usually get regular checks for this is cancer rates, um, especially in the colon. And I have a picture here showing you of these colon polyps. Um, these pop up due to irregular uh, cell division and what ends up happening is you end up getting larger tumors if those are not removed. So these are commonly removed during checkups, regular checkups when you get older. So uh, cancer rates are going to increase in the colon and the stomach. Um, th this is the areas where stem cells divide to maintain the epithelial population so that's why it's most common there. Uh, dehydration is common because the osmoreceptor sensitivity declines and then changes in other systems have a direct or possibly indirect effects on um, the digestive system such as a reduction in bone mass and calcium which is how the tooth loss happens and then dietary changes might occur due to some lack of sensitivity and smell and taste receptors of the tongue. Alright now um, section 1610 just mentions how the digestive system is extensively integrated with other body systems so what I would like you to do is check out the system integrator on page 572 you can see there's a lot there I would just like you to make a chart of your own choosing and then paraphrase and shorten uh, to your understanding you don't need to write everything word for word but just have a general idea of how these systems are affected by um, the digestive system and how the digestive system is affected by them. Uh, finally, I'm going to go over a few d diseases and disorders that are probably common or that you've heard of, such as mumps is the first one we're going to talk about, and it's a virus that attacks your salivary glands, which is why you see uh, this boy's face being really swelled up in the area of the salivary glands. This usually occurs at five to nine years of age, but we have vaccines now that usually prevent getting it. However, if you do get mumps, the first exposure will usually stimulate antibodies that will result in a permanent immunity, so you'll never get it again. Um, if you do get it pretty bad, um, infection of the testes can occur from males, which can affect the sterility. Um, it could also affect the pancreas that can produce temporary or permanent diabetes. Um, another one that you hear of often is gastric and peptic ulcers. Um, a peptic ulcer develops when digestive acids and enzymes erode the lining of the stomach or the proximal portions of the small intestine. Now the other names like gastric just indicates there's an ulcer in the stomach or duodenal indicates in the small intestine and it's caused by a bacterium known as Helicobacter pylori. And over here you can see a picture of the intestine that has ulcers, kind of this reddened patches that you can see throughout the intestinal walls. Not very comfortable. All right, the last one we're gonna talk in detail about is vomiting or emesis. It's a response of the digestive tract to chemical or mechanical irritation, particularly in the areas of the soft palate, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, or the proximal portions of the small intestine. And basically the vomiting reflex um, is controlled by your brain in the medulla region, and um, peristaltic waves will actually be uh, controlled to go in reverse towards the stomach instead of towards the ileum. Uh, so I decided to show you this picture of how the brain uh, works to cause this instead of other pictures that you probably don't want to see of somebody vomiting. Now there are a few others that you might want to jot down and take a few notes about uh, stomach cancer, liver disease, diverticulosis, and malabsorption syndromes and those are throughout uh, the chapter. And that will wrap us up for chapter 16. Obviously pause and play, um, repeat as needed, and I'll see you next time.